Did you know that the cult of Dionysus invented Western theatre? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the god of wine, the theatre, merriment and frenzied madness, who also had the ability to transform into a lion and turn men into dolphins. Today we're taking a look at the long history of Dionysus. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Dionysus, who was also known as Bacchus to both the Greeks and the Romans, was the ancient Greek god of wine, theatre, madness and wild frenzy, merriment and vegetation. But he didn't have the easiest start to life. Like many figures from Greek mythology, Dionysus' father was Zeus, the king of the gods. But his mother is most commonly noted as the princess of Thebes, Semele, although like most myths, there are many different versions and developments in the story of Dionysus and his parents, and he has also been noted as the son of Demeter, Io, or Dion. When Semele was pregnant with Dionysus, Zeus's wife Hera, disguised either as an old woman or a friend of Semele, persuaded her to ask Zeus to display himself to her in all of his divine splendor, as he would to his wife on Olympus. But Zeus's full godly form was too much for the mortal princess, and she died. Zeus removed the unborn Dionysus from his mother and sewed him to his thigh and carried him to full term. With this story in mind, it makes sense that Dionysus was known as the twice born. Then, after Dionysus was born, most literary accounts say that he was cared for by satyrs and nymphs on Mount Nysa, far from Hera's wrath and his chief educator was the satyr Silenus. Others say he was cared for by Rhea, who was technically his grandmother, Hermes, his half-brother, or Persephone, the goddess of spring and queen of the underworld. Later, he was cared for by his mother's sister Ino and her husband Athamas, but after Hera learnt of the young boy's whereabouts, she caused Ino and Athamas to go crazy, kill their children, and then themselves. Like most other Greek deities, Dionysus had many dalliances with gods, demigods and mortals alike, including the goddess Aphrodite and the titan goddess of the breeze, Aura, the nymph Nikaea and the princess Pallini, just to name a few. In many versions, the parents of the god of vegetable gardens, beehives and vineyards, Priapus, was Dionysus and either Aphrodite or an unnamed Mycian nymph. Dionysus' best known partner though is Ariadne, the mortal princess of Crete and daughter of King Minos. After being abandoned on Naxos by the Greek hero Theseus, she was discovered by Dionysus. The two wed, and they had numerous sons together. In some of the stories, Ariadne was killed by Artemis or turned to stone by Perseus. However, after her death, Dionysus traveled to Hades to recover her and brought her back to live with him on Olympus as his immortal wife. There are also tales claiming that the constellation Corona was the crown of Ariadne given to her as a wedding gift, and other stories in which Dionysus rescues his mother from the underworld, not Ariadne. Dionysus was a popular deity in art, and this may be because he was credited with giving man wine, not to mention being a deity with a long history dating back to the Mycenaean period. According to Pseudo Apollodorus in his Bibliotheca, Hermes took the infant Dionysus to be looked after by the nymphs at Mount Nysa, and during his youth, he discovered the grapevine. But after his discovery of the grapevine and wine by extension, Hera caused him to go mad, and in his madness, the god wandered far and wide to Egypt and Syria, introducing the grapevine as he traveled. Wine was the popular drink of choice in Greece, even from before the classical period, and Dionysus was often depicted with the vine in art. 
He was also often shown with his Theasis, which is a sacred rod of fennel topped with ivy, vine leaves, and sometimes a pine cone, as well as a cantharos, which is the drinking vessel for wine. Often he would be depicted with his followers, the male satyrs and the female maenads, figures that also feature in many myths of Dionysus. He was associated with bulls, serpents, and the panther, and would sometimes be depicted wearing a panther pelt. And he was usually clothed in a chiton or a long robe with a wreath of ivy leaves. In myth, perhaps due to his association with wine, Homer describes him as the joy of men, and Hesiod tells us he is much cheering. Some say in Dracanos, others in Windy Icaros, still others say in Naxos, O bull god, son of Zeus, or there be the deep eddying river Elpheos, pregnant Semele, bore you to thunder loving Zeus. Others say you were born in Thebes, Lord, but all of them lie, the father of men and gods gave birth to you far from people, hidden from white armed Hera. Nysa is the place, a mighty peak blooming with woods far from Phoenicia, near the river Nile. This is how one of the Homeric hymns to Dionysus begins, telling us of his parents and his early life hidden from Hera. The god has many, many more myths associated with him than just his rocky start to life. A common story Dionysus is involved in, and one that is found frequently on Greek pottery, is his role in coaxing the god Hephaestus back to Olympus, probably with the use of wine, after he had trapped his mother Hera in a golden chair. A common image on pottery is Dionysus leading the god of blacksmiths on the back of a donkey. Another famous myth Dionysus is a part of is the myth of King Midas and his golden touch. One day King Midas of Phrygia came across the chief follower and drinking partner of Dionysus, Silenus, rather worse for wear after perhaps drinking a bit too much. So Midas gave Silenus some food and then returned him to the god. In gratitude, Dionysus offered Midas a wish. And with that wish, Midas asked that everything he touched be turned to gold. Unfortunately, everything also meant food and water, so after nearing starvation and complete dehydration, Dionysus told Midas that he could reverse the gift by bathing in the Pactolus River. The Wrath of Dionysus is featured in many myths, with a couple of the most famous being the myths of Lycurgus, King of Thrace, and Pentheus, King of Thebes. Lycurgus made the questionable decision of driving Dionysus and his nurses off of Mount Nysa, who fled to the sea for refuge. In retaliation, Lycurgus was driven mad, which drove him to tear apart his wife and children, and he was later eaten by wild beasts. Pentheus met a similarly brutal fate. The king of Thebes refused to acknowledge Dionysus' divinity. He was offended by the excesses of the gods' festivals and tried to stop his people from honouring him. Pentheus decided to spy on the secret debauchery of Dionysus and his followers, but he was found out and ripped apart by his mother and aunts, who were in a frenzy caused by the god. The story of Pentheus is featured in the Greek tragedy by Euripides, the Bacchae. As told in one of the Homeric hymns to Dionysus, among other places, is the tale of the Tyrrhenian pirates. Dionysus, with rich dark hair and wearing a purple robe, was seized by pirates who tried to bind him, thinking that he was a son of a king they could hold for ransom. But the bonds wouldn't hold him, and the helmsman cried out that it must be an Olympian god, Zeus or Apollo, or perhaps Poseidon, and to not lay a hand on him, but to set him back at the shore. The master of the ship didn't listen and had his men hoist the sails. But soon, strange things started to happen. Wine started to stream through the ship, vines and dark ivy plants twined the mast and blossomed with flowers. The god changed into a lion and a bear appeared, and the men fled into the stern and crowded around the helmsman. But the lion, Dionysus, sprang and seized the master, which had all of the sailors jumping overboard and those sailors were promptly changed into dolphins. Only the helmsman remained with Dionysus' favour, since he tried to counsel his crewmates against abducting the god in the first place. 
Dionysus began his life as a demigod, and he wandered the earth to places like Egypt and Syria, but also Libya, Phoenicia, Anatolia, Phrygia, and even as far as India, until finally he was recognized as a full god, and people began to honor him, and his cult spread far and wide. Not to mention, he was often associated with other deities, such as the Phoenician god Tammuz and the Egyptian god Osiris, identifying him as a dying and reviving god figure, one who goes down into the underworld in death and then returns to life, bringing some benefit to humanity. In Dionysus's case, wine, freedom of the spirit, and joy. In this role, he was associated with the Eleusinian mysteries and Orphic cults, which were said to free one from the fear of death through the promise of eternal life. Given that Dionysus found Ariadne on the island of Naxos, it makes sense that the island was a particularly important sanctuary to the god. There is evidence for the cult of Dionysus going back to the Mycenaean period of Greece in the late Bronze Age, and it remained an important cult all the way into the Roman period. He was widely worshipped as a fertility god, and there were shrines and temples dedicated to him throughout Greece. The cult of Dionysus was an important part of Greek religion, and by the 6th century BCE, the Dionysia festival was established in Athens, and this developed into the later Roman Bacchanalia. Plato tells us that the Dionysia or festival of Dionysus was quite the revel. The whole city was drunk, and Greeks from all over would come to Athens. During the Dionysia, the main events were the theatrical performances put on, which began as only tragedies, but in 487 BCE, comedies were permitted too. The Dionysia festival developed from the earlier rites of Dionysus, during which his story was enacted by participants, and so his cult is credited with inventing theatrical performance in the West. The Dionysia of Athens, in fact, was where the great plays of Euripides, Sophocles, Aeschylus, and Aristophanes were performed for the first time, all in honour of Dionysus. Can you think of any other examples of a dying and reviving god from world mythology? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can explore more of Sophie Louise's designs at sophielouiseillustration.co.uk. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.